Now you guys are touring as a three-piece right now. Yeah. Is that going to be the plan from now on? Uh, you know, we, we've tried to having a, a, an extra guitarist many, you know, uh, three different occasions now. Um, for some reason, we just can't. We never get a guy that sees the, the, this, this band the, the same way that we see it, the way we want it to be. And so the guys, you know, we've, we've parted ways with guys three times now. So, you know, we feel like the live sound doesn't get really... I mean, there's a couple parts missing here and there, but it's not really it's not really crucial to the live show as far as we're concerned, you know. So we still play the songs, and I think I think as, as far as three pieces go, I, I don't think it sounds like it's thin or if it, need, it really needs anything. So until somebody tells us any different, uh, we'll just do that. And, you know, we don't, we don't use backing tracks or anything like that either. So we just... What you hear is, is what the three of us are doing on stage, and it's it's kind of it's kind of organic that way. And I, I we really like to keep it as, as as straightforward and rock and roll and as old school as possible. And that's refreshing to hear now because there are a lot of rock bands now that have gone to backing tracks. Everybody's doing it, man. And it's it's like well, I mean, you know, I'd say nine out of ten bands that we ever play with are doing it now. And it's like I understand that it, it, it's a nice buffer to have, but. We, we, we much prefer to, you know, if we're going to suck today, we're going to suck today without any, without the help of any back check trying to, trying to bring up the rear, you know. So I, I think, again, it's, you know, rock and roll is supposed to have an edge and it's supposed to be sort of chaotic and we don't use click tracks, but everything, you know, every, everything's really, again, it's just organic and it's just kind of like having a good time, you know. And it's okay if rock is messy. That, that's it's supposed to be, right? This, this, is, this, isn't, this isn't a pop concert where it's like, you know, dances behind us and choreography and stuff. It's a bunch of sweaty dudes drinking too much alcohol trying to get through a song before they forget how it goes. If one of you breaks into a dance number, though, I'm going to get worried. We, we, we are working on some choreography. It could happen. It could happen. Uh, Dale's got something that he likes to call the downhill slalom. Nice. It's a, it's a beautiful dance. It kind of incorporates uh, classical, uh, you know. A bit of merengue. Yeah, a little bit of merengue, a little bit of ballet. Some dirty dancing. Yeah, and, uh, and, and the cha-cha. Yeah. And, and it incorporates all these... All these Dance styles into one just epic moment of, of beauty. Well, Very inspired by Patrick Swayze. Oh, well, that, that's fantastic. And I know a lot of the female fans were very excited to see you guys, so if you break out the dirty dancing part, <laughs> expect panties and dollar uh, bills to rain the stage. You know, I think it sounds good on paper, but when Dale and I start dirty dancing with each other, it, it's, it's kind of like it's like watching the National Geographic Channel <laughs> or the Animal Planet. <laughs> now, uh, I wanted to ask you... Uh, you write such raw and emotional songs, Sean. Uh, on this new album, what was the hardest track for you to write? Um, I'd say "Pass Slowly." It's a, you know, it's it's one song that I've actually really touched on my brother and everything like that. So, it, it, as far as emotionally, that was a difficult one. But you know, every single time you write a song, it's you're trying to you're trying to say something that that you're trying to get a point across and not sound contrived and and not try and you know not try and sound like you're being dramatic or whatever, and, and also try and keep it as universal as you can while dealing with a subject that, that's bugging you. So, it's 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 kind of like. It's, it's a, it becomes like a something that the more you do it, hopefully you get better at it, right? So I hope I did it this time. <laughs> yeah, well, so far I think you've done a fantastic Thanks, job with it. I think your bandmates would agree. We were all a little surprised when the first single was, was called Country Song. <laughs> and uh, I got to talk to John a couple months back, and we were all, you know, a little shocked at how that went. And uh, But number one, even despite yeah. the Yod title. Well, I think, I think people are starting to get sick of hearing the same type of thing all the time, man. It's like... You listen to, even for me, I'm starting to get bored with what's on rock radio. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of the bands that you hear are the same kind of thing over and over. And, you know, it, it, it seems like record companies sign a band that sounds like any other band, and then they go with that. Like, you know, the whole screamo movement was a bunch of bands sounding the same. Emo bands are the same. Uh, that's why, you know, I started getting into a lot of alternative music and metal bands, because metal bands, at least, they have they have something... You know, there's there's a, there's a characteristic between bands that you can tell them apart. You know what I mean? And alternative bands just just are more, I think, more experimental. Um, but it's the same in the pop world, man. You listen to the top 20 on the pop radio stations. It's like I can't tell one artist from the other. It's, and, and, and you know, either Rihanna or Lil Wayne is on every single track anyway. Well, that so was like, what I was gonna it's say. Like one big super group. Nobody can do a song by themselves anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and so we we felt like we wanted to do a single that that kind of stands out at rock radio, and that when it comes out, it's, it's got a kind of a sense of humor to it a little bit. Um, and you know, I feel like it rocks, and, it, and I feel like it's it's something that we wanted to say. You know, we're still a band, we're still out here, we're still writing music, <laughs> and here's something different that from everything you know, everything else that's out there. And when you mention that sense of humor, the video is very funny and very well done. Who's was that something that was pitched to you, or did somebody in the band come up with that concept? I think it was it was it was part of it was one night we were having one of those great see the think tank moments, <laughs> uh, fueled by vodka and. Uh, <laughs> It was just something we, you know, we wanted to do something ridiculous and something that was kind of funny and 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 really taking you know making fun of ourselves, uh, which I think is important. I think we, we don't we we've never been a band that really takes ourselves too seriously. I think the music side you take seriously, but as, as far as the rest of it goes, 
it's fun, man. You know, it's supposed to be a good time. And so we're, we're all huge fans of the Foo Fighters, and they've always had great videos. So it was it was almost a, you know an homage to the Foo Fighters in, in the sense of humor that they have. And and the fact is that yeah, we're a bunch of idiots, man. So <laughs> we really like we like making fun of ourselves and other people and, and everything in general. So yeah, we'll start with ourselves and then spread it out from there. Well, we can't wait to see the vodka-induced idiot parade take the stage later today. <laughs> well, yeah, it should be pretty good. <laughs> we, we, all we know is we got to stay. I, I, I can trust vodka. I can't trust the Canadian beer, man, because the stuff here is like jet fuel, and uh, we've, we've had we've had we've had nothing but great experiences on it. But we, we, we know now that if we start drinking Canadian beer after the show, so then we, then we don't have to function anymore on any sort of like you know human level. So it's going to be a good time, though. Well, after the show, after your set's done, we're in the Molson M Zone. Come on by. Molson M's on me. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, <buddy. laughs> Thank you so much, Seether. Can't Thank wait you. for the set. Uh, Seether in Halifax today at Rock the Hill. Get your ass down here. Woo-hoo!